Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and today I want to play with Wires. Wires is a audio effect plugin from Audio Thing. It's another hardware recreation from the mind of the German composer Heinbach. There are a bunch of fun things from Audio Thing that he's curated. This is another. What's a wire recorder? What's a wire recorder? Well, we'll talk about it in a second. <music> Look at the picture of this wire recorder spinning on the screen. Um, So this is a fairly faithful recreation of a 70s Soviet wire recorder. Instead of recording to magnetic tape, it would record it to a hair-thin wire, and it has a very unique set of uh, recording properties. Well, uh, getting your hands on the finicky hardware of an actual... Uh, wire recorder is impossible. I've seen them. I've never used one myself, and I've been around since the 70s. The uh, the typical thing to do would be to put it on an aux send and use it as a kind of a crushing, uh, dirtying up, or even kind of sort of fixed tempo delay uh, device. And it does make a beautiful insert for delays and just in general a you know, to add saturation. We're going to try a bunch of different applications of it today. We've got all kinds of controls that you wouldn't have on the ordinary device available here. Well, just to begin, uh, here's the landing page for Audio Things version of uh, of wires. And I'm really grateful to Heinbach for providing all these unique hardware recreations of what are essentially impossible to get your hands on uh, devices, things that dirty up the sound. I remember the first time I recorded my piano with a digital audio recorder. It was a DAT recorder, and I used a stereo microphone. I put the headphones on and listened back to what I had done, and, and I'll, I, I have to tell you, I just cried because it was such a pristine rendering of what I had just heard in the room and what I had performed. I'd spent my, you know, up until that point, this was sometime in the early 90s, I guess, I recorded everything to tape. Even Dolby SR at the time wasn't, there'd still be hiss and there wouldn't be that sort of picture. Well, cut to 40 years later, and listen, we're trying to dirty up our sound. This is a great way to dirty up the sound. So these controls over here emulate the um, effects and the rather steep noise floor of the original thing. If I turn up the motor noise and the hiss and hum, Listen, it's just sitting there humming away. (laughs) It's intense, right? I have a little piece that I made with uh, six tracks, guitar, bass, couple of keyboards, drums. I used different patches for each of them, and I had to turn down the hiss and hum, the motor noise on each of them. But listen, here's a Wurlitzer through this device here. Right? flutter here, the dropouts, right, the clicks, and the clicks are kind of intense. I don't really care for them that much, but it's a real artifact of a wire recorder. We've got a very nice tilt EQ, which changes the color of the sound, and while it's not a very full-featured EQ, is kind of all I discovered I needed. Nice. It, you know, there's speakers built in, and actually I'm using the speaker here if I turn it off. You hear what happens? The speaker actually has character. It's modeled, and it's a mic input that I'm using. I wouldn't necessarily have to use that. Well, fun, right? You have routing here. You can crank the input to get a kind of a, uh, I don't know if it's a diode or a triode um, saturation. You can hear it dirtying up. And the output stage on this was actually a tube output on the original. Well, that was the whirly, and a great sound for a keyboard player. It has that degraded, crunchy goodness, and it's super fun to play with. I also was very impressed by how it sounds on, you know, sampled drums. Crunch, right? 
And that's right just as an insert on the channel. We're going to look at the echo and how to use it as a send in a moment, but listen to this uh, little piece that I've done. I've got a CP10, an analog keyboard. I actually own an old CP10. I had to drag it out because of the beautiful analog goodness of this original thing. Uh, the Whirly is a MIDI instrument. I recorded some guitar as well. There's bass and drums. Well, just listen to how all this stuff works. This just feels so old that I just went for that kind of like old, gritty, swampy vibe, right? It's good for other things though, too. As a sound designer for theater and for film, I'm frequently asked to recreate the sound of vintage equipment to put us in place historically or a sense of time. It really gets me there. I've used tape emulations, of course, and I have a bunch of them, but the wire recorder has some very special properties, properties that I associate with that sort of late 60s, early 70s uh, recording technology, and also that sort of like... I'm a spy in a movie sort of sound, right? Now, as it happened, as I was starting to play around with this upgrade of wires, Dave Hillowitz dropped a beautiful, free, decent sampler, sample set, record cutter synth. And um, basically, he, he cut a home record uh, using just sine waves and then made a sample instrument out of it. And it's just a beautiful sound. Here you hear it going through um, a wires uh, patch that I made myself. Wow and flutter. I'm sending it into the mic input. I'm giving it a little bit of uh, that sort of overdrive. And then I'm mixing mostly the sound of the wires instrument. And I could hear us go from nothing to fully mixed. Do you hear what, what beautiful stuff it does to the sound? It can take any static sampled sound and kind of create a constantly kind of vi vitalized signal. When I would listen to that, I said, that's beautiful for, for ambient music, I bet. I, I'm just going to pull up my felt piano patch and see what I can get. Well, what I did, though, was I put it on a aux send. So here's my piano sound. And I'm, sen I'm, if you look down here, I'm sending it uh, to an aux channel. And I've got an iteration of crystalline, and then it's going out of crystalline into wires. And uh, I've also, get down here, got the echo on. Let's listen to this little piano part with no direct signal. Right? Oh my God. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that back a bit and I'll bring the piano back up. Now that's just, you know, kind of this weird heartbreaking sound, right? Well, if you know Heinbach at all, you know he's a kind of a playful character in the sort of YouTube and musical community. I imagine him living in a gingerbread house uh, built of uh, cir old uh, circuit boards and triode tubes and Soviet-era broadcast equipment. Uh, I'm sure that's not true. He's probably a modern guy just like the rest of us. But thanks to him, 
for bringing our attention to this gear, for creating with audio thing these emulations of it. The, the emulations of old analog gear that brings that vitality uh, back into the sort of sometimes sterile digital recordings, I value it enormously. This um, device is kind of on sale right now. I think it'll be $59 once it comes off sale. Super fun. A little goes a long way with it. You heard that track I did with like five instances, six instances of it. It's great on a send, and I think that's where it's going to shine. I love it as an effect tucked under the reverb or a clean reverb or clean delay because it sort of animates that background noise. Well, I hope it's been useful to hear it, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say and what you can do with it. Listen, like and subscribe, right? Thanks. I'd, I'd appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.